What is up everyone? All right, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I've read so many of you guys' comments and some of you guys have DM'd saying how excited you are for this video right here, right now. Today we're gonna talk about the worst makeup of 2021. Now these are not all like necessarily things that like released in 2021. They're just things that I personally tried this past year that were not great. <laughs> these videos are very fun for me to film. This might be the first like of the year one I've done of worst makeup. I always do like my best makeup of the year, best lifestyle stuff. I've already done those for 2021 if you wanna watch them. I always call these my Jammy Awards, like the best stuff of the year. And uh, these I guess will be the Slammy Awards because I'm slamming these products. So cheers, excited to talk trash about some makeup. Uh, a lot of these really, I just thought quality wise were not good products. There are a few that aren't necessarily terrible, but they didn't work for me. So I'll try to kind of explain that as we go, but let's dive in. All right, so I was gonna go in like a particular order. I don't think it really matters because these are all crummy products. This is just for fun. So we're gonna go in whatever order I feel like it. Let's start with one that surprised me with how <laughs> not good it was. And this was a recent purchase from Fenty Beauty. This is the Bomb Posse eyeshadow palette. Now, I have to say this. You guys warned me about this palette because I'd mentioned it in an anti-haul wish list style video a few months ago. And I was like, I think I wanna buy it. Like. It looks like colors I would love. Like this is totally up my alley. A lot of you guys were like, Jessica, don't. It's awful. I've tried it or I've heard about it and it's not great. So the good news is I didn't end up buying it. Fenty Beauty sent it to me in PR and it is indeed awful. It really, it is not, not great. It's not pigmented. The shimmers are like, honestly, A, it looks a little different in person than it does on the computer when you're shopping for it. So there's that but it's just not a, <laughs> a high-end feeling palette. I Most of my drugstore favorite palettes are so much better than this. And for this to be, of course, in that higher price range, definitely save your money. Absolutely a flop. I was very shocked that I didn't like it as much as I did. Just such a bummer. And I feel like in the pictures I saw online, like these two shimmers right here are super pink. It just looked different online. So big disappointment. I am working on declutters of all of my makeup collection. I've done one so far. I've done my concealers, which I can link, but I will be going through all the categories this coming year. Anything I mentioned today will be decluttered, but I might hold on to them as silly as that sounds until we get to those categories. Cause I, I just feel like there's something nice about like decluttering it all together. I know. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, okay. These new Bare Minerals Mineralist eyeshadow palettes, no. I thought maybe just one of them was a fluke. I don't remember which one I tried first. Maybe this one in Sunlit. The idea of it is super cool because it's all recyclable. You can even pull out the eyeshadow palette portion and recycle it. Like, I think the idea of it is amazing. But why are the shadows not the same quality as the other Bare Minerals palettes I have loved. Like one of them I loved, discontinued, but it was my favorite enough so that I hit pan and bought it again. These are totally a different formula. They're just a little bit scratchy. They're not as creamy and easy to blend as I'm used to from Bare Minerals. So huge bummer. Just bring back the old ones. Put them in this packaging, but like bring back the ones you used to have. Why are you recreating the wheel when it comes to your shadows? They were really good. So really, really bummed about that. The other one I had, by the way, is ultra natural. Yeah, again, just kind of scratchy. They had a lot of different other colorways, but kind of heard the same things about the other ones too. So I would stay far, far away. What a bummer. <laughs> so much wasted money. Although in fairness, I think those are from PR. I, I have, I know those first few things were PR, but I like to be honest with y'all when it, you know, if it's not good, I'm not gonna say glowing things about it just because it was sent in PR. Anyway, I think most of the rest of the stuff we're gonna be talking about is stuff I bought. One, maybe my biggest disappointment this year when it comes to things that I bought is the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look in a Palette. This is the Stoned Rose Beauty. First of all, gorgeous colors. For my skin tone, these are perfect. It's got some cheek products, eyeshadows, some more like the bronzer and highlight. I love the idea of it, big old mirror. This was freaking expensive. And I just felt like this felt mediocre. It's not like it's the worst things. Like the shadows here, I think are better than like the Bare Minerals and the Fenty one. But it's just not on par with all of the other things I've tried from Charlotte Tilbury, like their eyeshadow palettes and their separate face products, their blushes and stuff. And so that's why I felt like it was just mediocre. And for the price tag, you don't want something that's mediocre. So 
I think you'd be better off buying a straight up eyeshadow palette. They have a bronzer and highlight duo that's really good. Like you can spend the money you would have spent on this on other things from Charlotte Tilbury and they're just gonna be better quality. So I was really disappointed. I'm still at the point where I'm like, I kind of want to keep using it because it was such a, you know, big purchase. Every time I look at it, it makes, it gives me that feeling in my stomach and it makes me sad because it really was not impressive. Ooh, this one, the Milani Cream little trio. Do you guys remember when I tried this? It was just fine. And it's crazy because the Milani Cream blushes, their Cheek Kiss blushes are so good. And I'm like, again, I'm like, why are you not just using the same formula? And now I want to swatch these side by side. Like, very straight up different formula. So that's the single cheek kiss one that I love. This is a swatch from the palette. And I just felt like the palette ones just are like patchy, whereas the cheek kiss, you can really like blend it. So if you're wanting a well-priced cream blush, go for their singles because those are really good. And you know what? I didn't mention the Milani cheek kiss in my best of makeup of the year last week and I really regret it because that was one the second I saw it I was like oh my gosh like that should be on there so highly recommend these stay far far away from that one that is not good <laughs> another thing sorry Milani to to throw under the bus here are there supercharged cheek and lip ones the ones that are like highlighty and bronzery these don't do anything so I like would swatch the bronzer. I'm like, oh, okay. It literally blends away so fast and like kind of patchy and it doesn't stay on the skin and it's almost too oily for its own good. And the highlight just doesn't really show up at all. It, just bizarre. I will say though, their, their blush in this is actually pretty good. It's not the best one I've ever tried, but it's still pretty good. So I would say generally avoid the line, but you know, there is some good products in that, but oof, that, those are awful. That was like an instant hatred for me too. <laughs> By the way, what I'm wearing on my lips is the Laura Mercier Chep, Chep, no, Chest Nut Lip Liner. And it's just a really good like everyday nude liner. It's a wood pencil if you prefer that, you know, that you have to sharpen. And then the lipstick is one of my all time favorites, the Charlotte Tilbury In Love with Olivia shade. And the packaging is really cute too. Ooh, the, I did not like this. This is the Revlon Color Stay Light Cover Foundation. I like lighter coverage stuff. Like I don't mind that. Most of the time that's what I'm reaching for. I definitely, I think, prefer medium coverage generally, but I like light coverage stuff. This just looked bad on my skin. Like it would catch on to peach fuzz or any, any weird texture. And for something that's lighter coverage, I don't want something that's gonna draw attention to flaws or whatever texture. I want something that's just gonna slightly even it out and we move on with our day. And this slightly evened my skin out, but it just really drew attention to any imperfections I had. So this is one that, again, every time I see that in my makeup drawer, I'm like, ooh, I don't like it. <laughs> Another one that just looked awful on my skin is the Ulta Beauty Effortless Effect Medium Coverage. It says hydrating foundation. I felt it was kind of mattifying and it, again, just drew people's eyes to, you know, like little wrinkles I have there and like fine lines. It just like sat in them grossly. And it's just one of those that I used it that one time on camera and I was like, oh, and I used it one more time, I think. And it was just as bad as the first time. I'm like, okay, I'm done. We are done here. <laughs> and then another that just didn't work for me, but I do think some people still like this, is the Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation. First of all, the shade is awful for me, so that doesn't help matters, but it's just a very, like, I don't know how to describe this. It's kind of medium coverage, but again, I felt like it just kind of made my skin look older and a little bit drier. And I don't, you know, this isn't necessarily meant to be like a luminous foundation or anything like that. But I just felt like even if you had oily skin, yes, it might help mattify a bit, but it just didn't make my skin look nice. Like I, I think I would have rather just not worn foundation than put this on. So, and I felt like anytime I would apply this and I'd put, you know, concealer on in other spots, it would always mix really weird with whatever concealer I was using. Like you could always see a line. So just bizarre one that I'm, I don't ever need to use again. I keep trying to love this and I keep being disappointed. So the Rare Beauty Little Melting Blushes could be the cutest packaging ever for a cream blush. I mean, how cute is this, right? But it's just patchy. It's just patchy and I feel like I've kind of heard that from a lot of other people too that have tried it. You can make it look good, it just takes a lot more work than virtually every other <laughs> cream blush I use. And I'm like, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna work harder at this. But I think like if you owned it and you only own like one or two blushes, you would make it work. It's not like the worst thing in the world, but it's just not a favorite. And 
I continually want it to work just based on how cute it is. And it, it just really is not as good as other ones I have. These two are gonna be controversial because I think the actual lip products themselves are absolutely stunning. But the sting of these plumping lip glosses is too much. And I'm someone that doesn't mind a little bit of like that plumping, stinging, not stinging is not the right word for like the buxom ones, tingling. So those tingle and they plump your lips up just a bit. These sting. <laughs> I've got the Fenty Beauty Heat Lip Gloss, absolutely beautiful on the lips, and it works. It plumps them, you guys, but it, it hurts. Like, I, I continually compare it to if you had like those little red hot, you know, candies, and you like licked them and like rubbed them all over your lips, that's how it feels. And even when you wipe it off, that sting stays for another like 30 minutes, and I, I cannot handle it. So the dupe for this, and I probably will still mention this in my upcoming dupes video, because they are dupe. The uh, Milani Max Plumping Lip Lacquer. Same exact feeling. Absolutely beautiful on the lips though. So if you don't mind it, you know, they give you that gorgeous look, you can save the money and get this one. Generally, I can't, I can't do it. And it makes me so sad. In another one I kind of felt similarly to, it's not the exact same sting, but it's similar, is this Rimmel Stay Plumped. This color is really, really pretty. It's my favorite kind of glossy. It's like a pinky, like a grayish pink. I absolutely love it and I love the way this looks on my lips. But again, I always have to wipe it off. I can't hang with that. You know what I mean? Like I, I always try and I just can't. But I know I've read a lot of comments from you guys saying you absolutely love them. So I don't want to totally write all of these off, especially the Milani ones for all of you guys, because some of you guys don't mind that sting and it is so pretty. I am blasting through these. I know all my other Jammy Awards videos were like longer, but this I'm like blasting through. Maybe one of the worst, if not the worst product in this entire video are these. They're from the Gilmore Girls like collab they did with Ulta Beauty. I did a video a few months ago and they had some cute things in the line, like some hair pro like hair scrunchies and things. They had a Luke's Diner mug. So some of those were totally worth buying. Like they're really cute, but these eyeshadows, I had high hopes for cause I'm like, oh my gosh, they're neutral, I'm totally a neutrals person, so I was all excited about them. These are the most underwhelming <laughs> shadows ever. They just don't, like, they barely show up, and when they do, they kind of wear off within a few hours. Like, they just felt like very, very, very cheap 90s eyeshadow. Not that, I mean, obviously there was good eyeshadow in the 90s, but do you know what I mean? Like, drugstore shadows have come a long way, and now they're really good but a lot of the drugstore eyeshadow back in like the 90s was not great. That's how these felt. So huge disappointment. I don't even think they're available anymore, but I thought it was still worth mentioning in case they are, don't buy them. This one I almost didn't mention, and I'm gonna mention anyway because I have decided I don't like it. <laughs> it's from Stila, it's the Heaven's Hue Highlighter. So I bought this one that's like white, it's called Opulescence. And the reason I go back and forth with it is because it can still look nice on the skin, but it definitely has glitter in it. And so if it's not applied exactly where you want it, which I am very sloppy with my application. So if it's not applied exactly where you want it, it is very obvious. And so I thought like, well, maybe I'll get a different shade of this. But as I've looked into the couple other shades, they all have that glitter. And so I don't know, I think you have to be into, I like a good highlight, but I don't want it to have like chunkiness in it. And this does. So that's why uh, I'm torn about it. But I, I think generally I really don't like it. And so I don't tend to reach for it anymore. And there you go. Two quick ones that are really similar. The Milani Peach Tinted Under Eye Brightener. This one and this next one really get you guys going because <laughs> some of you guys are like, Jessica, you're using it wrong. I'm like, I'm using it the way I want to use it. And I'm not, let me explain. <laughs> okay. I'm getting defensive because I really don't like these products. The other one I'll go ahead and tell you because they're so similar is the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener. Okay, so I don't think that either of these are meant to be concealers. I know the Milani one isn't, but I think they're both just meant to be slightly maybe correcting, mostly brightening, and so you could maybe put a concealer on top of it. And that's kind of what a lot of you guys have said. Those of you that like these, you're like, no, I, I use this in conjunction with the concealer or I use it on just like low key days. The Fenty one just doesn't, it makes my under eyes look worse. Again, I'd rather just not have anything on them than this because it really catches on any dryness I have, any, you know, of course, fine lines, I think most of us have, if not all of us. So 
Th that is my biggest gripe with this. This one, the tinted under eye brightener, you know, you can wear it. What does it actually say? Yeah, it's just like slight, it'll reduce the appearance of dark circles. You can wear it alone or underneath concealer. I will tell you right now, and I know a lot of you guys are the same, I'm not gonna spend the time to put on two things on my under eye. I'm just not. Even when I have a little more time to do my makeup, it's just not a step that I feel like makes enough of a difference for me that I'm gonna take that extra time. So that is my biggest gripe. I'm like, so I don't really like it alone. I don't, it doesn't really do enough alone. And I'm not gonna take the time to do it underneath concealer. So that, that's just it. So I don't know, it's all right. But I think you just have to know yourself and know is that a product you're actually gonna use or not? Because alone, I really don't think it does enough to, like I'd rather grab the Glossier Stretch Concealer and just quickly do that if I'm trying to do something fast to just lightly brighten that area because that works way better. So another one is the Ulta Beauty Metallic Cream Eyeshadow. The day I opened this, and it wasn't old, like I just bought it. Well, just look at this, for example. Look at that, for example. It's just kind of dry, and I felt like, you know, I could make it work, but it just wasn't a great product. Well, now it's looking really nice on camera, isn't it? And I just felt like it kind of would blend away pretty quickly. It can be, slightly pretty and there's always the part of me that every time I swatch it I'm like maybe I'll really like it but I don't reach for it for a reason because I have better stuff out there if I'm gonna go the cream shadow route and I don't often go that route anyway so I would say generally avoid these I don't I think just think there's better out there another disappointment is from Charlotte Tilbury these are what are they actually called they're like these like tinted lip balm things there's something about these that they just like sit on top of the lips and it's a cool idea that it's kind of a, you know, a tinted lip balm. I mean, it's not like a unique brand new idea, but I like tinted lip balms, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But these, I don't know, they just like sit on top of the lips and they make the lines in my lips look weird and aged and I can't describe them, but every time I've used them, I've hated it and wiped it off. So I would say avoid these, go for like her traditional lipsticks that are absolutely stunning because those I don't think are very good. If you're wanting to go that route, I would recommend like the L'Oreal or the Maybelline, literally every drugstore brand makes them. They're like shine lipsticks. Those, I'll link a couple of my favorites below. Those are way more beautiful. They actually will sink into your lips and they look healthy and nice and just way better than these. And they're way cheaper. So that's everything. I know. <laughs> Can you believe it? I love talking smack about products. <laughs> I know like in my monthly favorites I do here, I try to include some fails as we go. So some of these have been fails throughout the year too, so they might not be totally new to you, but I hope you enjoyed this Slammy Awards for 2021. If you want me to do this again next year, I probably will because this was fun and kind of weirdly easy to go through my collection and pull all the things I hated. It was very easy. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. Again, if you haven't seen my best of makeup of 2021, definitely check that out. It's kind of like the sister video to this, right? And then I've also done my best of the year for everything else, skincare, kitchen, like lounge clothing, pajamas. <laughs> I was gonna say just clothes, but it really is just like loungy clothes from Target that I love. But uh, if you wanna watch that video with all of those things in that, I will link that below too. That was my favorite one to do this year. And I hope you subscribe. If this is your first video of mine or maybe you've watched a few and you're not sure, I would love for you to subscribe, catch a few more of my videos. I love to do drugstore dupes videos too. I've got one coming up, ooh, actually very soon. Very, very soon. So subscribe for that. I've got a lot of good ones to share with you guys. And I love you all. Thank you for watching. Happy 2022. Here's to hoping this year is better than last year and the year before. Anyway, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.